Hello there. Welcome to the light of God's way, Yatuve. I'm Adolfina Shepherd. This is my co-host, Thomas Knight Templar. Good evening, everyone. We have an awesome show, as usual, lined up for tonight. And tonight, we have a special guest who has studied the Kabbalah for most of his life. And so he's going to be enlightening us to that, maybe giving us rudimentary knowledge, because it is a very complicated subject. So let's introduce our guest. Stephen Popiotech. That's fine. That's right? <laughs> okay. And so um, let's uh, get to Stephen. And how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I definitely have, um, I've been studying the, more so the Tree of Life because the Kabbalah covers many different traditions. And I'm, I'm not Jewish, so I come from it more from an esoteric, mystic point of view, more, more of a Western magical tradition um, for about, about 20 years on and off, I'd say, uh, was when I, when I first got exposed to it. Um, but uh, I basically call myself a cosmic shaman, which because I develop, develop the new system involving cosmic shamanism, which integrates different spiritual traditions, but also uses it as a, a stepping stone, so to speak, to get into more of the uh, new energies and new teachings that are coming and that are more relevant for where we are moving into in this age of Aquarius and this ascension process that the Earth is going through and humanity's transformational uh, process as well. So uh, the actual tree of life is mainly what I focus on in the Kabbalah, so that'll be what we'll be discussing today. You know, last night I just happened to watch something on, I think it was 60 Minutes, where they had about the Star of Bethlehem. And it was interesting because one, at the end, one of the scientists talked about how uh, a new star suddenly exploded and brought forth this other star. Mm -hmm. So it was the end of the one age and bringing in the new age at that point when, when Christ was born. But now we're going into a new age again, and I'm sure that this has a large part to do with it. So I don't know where to start because I know virtually <laughs> this much about, you know, the well, whole situation. You start at the beginning and have them explain the tree of life. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so how about, uh, can we have up the tree of life illustration so everyone can see that? Maybe we should start there. Or the, oh, you know what? Or the placenta uh, photo, if you, uh, whichever one you find first. <laughs> because I found that so interesting when I saw that. It looks pretty amazing, actually. I mean, you see yeah. the tree of life, and then you see it's replicated it's in the placenta. In placenta. Look at that. Is that not amazing when you look at that? So it starts in our very cells from the very beginning when, when uh, we're born. And I would, I would venture to say you would agree with that. Absolutely. And, and, and it also shows us, it helps to illustrate the principle that the tree life is holographic in nature and fractal. So it's going to show itself on different size scales and, and in different types of realms or kingdoms, physical and non-physical. Yeah. And, you know, it's a shifting thing too, right? So this is why it's so complicated. Um, but as we go forward, we can have up the next illustration, please, of the uh, Tree of Life. And uh, Stephen can walk us through some of it here and see how we go. Obviously, uh, there's so much involved with it. He probably knows to play harp, but I need something to refer to. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's actually yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be referring to it throughout the actual um, gathering here as well um, and it'll, it'll, it'll definitely make some more sense hopefully by the by the end of the show <laughs> uh, in, in general just to start with the idea of what the tree life is uh, about is from it's it also has its roots aside from being a Jewish system um, esoteric Christianity is, is basically is tied into it and then we well we'll start on that level before we go into the more out there aspects of the okay. topic because a, a lot of what Jesus had said or what he's quoted as saying uh, and a lot of material in the Bible is actually a lot of Kabbalistic encoded information. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when, when Yeshua, which is his original name, instead of just calling it Jesus, um, which that, that's actually very important because when we go later on into one of the other charts, um, when we work with the pentagram which we'll, that we'll talk about, it's comprised of five letters that are the original name of what Jesus is about, the yod Hey shin vav Hey, as opposed to just the shortened version of it. I uh, saw that when I was looking at that, and I said, that is Yeshua, that yeah, is yeah, Jesus. Yeshua, exactly, <laughs> okay, exactly. I saw that. So okay. I like you pronounce the, the Hebrew very well. Well, I, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's probably debatable. <laughs> well, it's I also about, about the intention. I guess you have an old soul, a Hebrew yeah. soul. <laughs> I definitely have had I a, no sold that a number of past lives in many, many, many of those traditions. Yes. Um, but basically, the actual tree of life um, is a blueprint, is a kind of template uh, for a process of creation. Uh, I mean, this is, of, of course, there are many more levels to that, but it, as a simple explanation of it. So the actual tree starts from the top going down in terms of the order of manifestation. So it starts in the top of the tree, which is called Keter, um, and it manifests fully into Malkut, which is, at, which is at the base of the tree of life. 
all the um, circles basically are known as um, sephira or sephirot, um, which stands for enumerations or spheres of energy. So they represent discrete stages of consciousness, basically, of how if you want, if you want to encapsulate the great white light of the creator, so to speak, or the infinite light. Um, how, how, how do we go from that great light, which is formless, into a manifest structure? So tree life helps us to understand that kind of con spiritual condensation process, if you would, or a precipitation from going from more unrefined um, universal essence, which starts in Ketcher, manifesting into the last sphere, which is manifest reality. So all, all the stages in between are, are refined levels of that. Um, mm -hmm. Almost like a simple analogy, a very simple analogy would be with the water, with, with going from the gaseous state, say of water being steam, and then you cool it down, it becomes water, and then it becomes ice if you cool it down even more. So that idea of spiritual condensation would be an idea of yeah. you know, paralleling the physical process of going from the white light and then manifesting through the rainbow of manifestation. See, I'm surprised because when I saw crayon up there, I was thinking to myself, okay, that must, that's the top. I did, I did, I, <laughs> yeah, well, right? you got it. When I saw crayon going by the general um, things of the, uh, the angels, the archangels, I was thinking Michael, but I see it's ruled by Metatron. Yes. And yes. Metatron, you know, is a very important archangel too. But, you know, well, it's been said, isn't it, that Metatron is the voice of God? Yes, for sure. I mean, well, I'd say they all are in, 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 in terms Metatron. of the essence expression, but part of that derivation, um, the, the top and bottom stuff, wrote, which is interesting, those are the only two names uh, in terms of the archangel names that are not of Hebrew derivation, uh, which is interesting. So there's a lot of debate about where the name Metatron, but part of it, as often been, times been discussed as being more of, more of an extension of, of the Greek mm -hmm. word metathronos, See, which I, would be I, he who is closest to the throne of God. Yeah, so I, that's was, I was wondering about that because of all the other names like Zachiel and uh, uh, Uriel, everything that has L at the end, yeah, is, yeah. it means with God or something like that. Uh, I'm looking at this, the basic chakra is going down, which is basically what we work with. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing that they're spread out into this uh, form here. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that you can enlighten me to the other ones that are here on this. Oh, uh, yes. No, and, and it's very fascinating because the, uh, you can definitely connect the uh, chakra system to the tree of life very nicely, um, and which is one reason why it's really great to work with it, to be able to, especially if you're doing chakra meditations or working with kundalini or kundalini yoga, mm -hmm. um, these systems all, all do connect because it is mm -hmm. about understanding how we are an expression of this divine light made manifest into form, and that um, one of the references that Jesus had mentioned in the Bible that was also a very simple one that's encoded when he mentioned that there are many rooms in his father's mansion. Right, right, right. He was referring to the tree of life. And because each of these energy centers of, of the Sephiroth represent a room, so to speak, in, in, the, in the mansion of, of, the, of the divine creator's creation and, and then manifest it locally <laughs> because we're here talking about it. <laughs> well, yes. um, but it obviously build, builds a bridge when part of the reference of Jacob's ladder is a reference to the tree of life because you're actually dealing with, except it's not just a straight up diagonal ladder, it's more of a spiral staircase <laughs> <laughs> in this regard. So mm -hmm. do you, you're working down or you're working up? You can go either way. If you're, if you're looking at the process of creation, you would start from the top mm -hmm. and then work your way down in what they call like a lightning bolt configuration. Okay. So it would actually just be, I mean, people can look at a chart, but it, it would start basically in the numerical order. So you would go from one, one, two, three, and you would keep going down in a yeah, lightning like bolt manner. If you follow the actual numbers themselves, though, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll trace. You could they'll trace it out. So then, how does it this relate to the chakra specifically? Because mm -hmm. uh, obviously, this if you look at this would only be five. Yes, yeah, that that's where you get more more of the crossover patterning in there. Um, technically, if you're working with Bina and Hakma, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, they would combine together because they represent the left. Well, in order, before we even talk about the chakras, it's important to look at the tree as as reflected in the actual body itself. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and so. Where you have Bina, which starts off on the on the on the, on the upper top sphere, mm -hmm. that that's that's the right side of the body. Okay. And Hakama is the left side, and then Ketcher represents the middle pillar or the middle section of the body going down the spinal column. So in a way, if you look at the old school idea of like the Caduceus or her, 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 Hermes staff, mm -hmm. which represents the male female energies oh, right. of the Yin Yang mm -hmm. current, that is represented in a way by these individual circles, where it represents the spiraling energy clockwise and counterclockwise of mm -hmm. male female energy but those yang. are chakras too well they they kind of work together because the in, in the kundalini system the actual spiral energies will, will intersect right at different points or overlap each other so this is why in the tree though it's a little different in the sense that being and hakma um, they would be combined together simplistically we can go longer into this topic later um, where where you find a third eye and yes. because in a sense the uh, 
the actual top three energy centers are really cross applied to the idea of like the, the capstone on the pyramid. This is this is like our spiritual capstone mm -hmm, and represents mm -hmm. in a way a snapshot of the of the brain where Bina is the right side of the brain, right side of the face. Oh. Hakama is left side of the brain, left side of the face, and it catches the crown which goes into, into the cranium. But that if you make that triangle, I mean that's one way to make the triangle across your head. You can also do it mm -hmm. horizontally. Right, you know. right. But yeah. in terms of the vertical capstone, then the, the middle of that pyramid would be the eye, so to speak. And would that be, would be 13, right? The number 13. And what happens with the numbers here is that they're originally um, listed in the formation of how creation started. So the actual energy centers of the sephirot are, are numbered according to their process of formation, which came first. After the energy centers were created, then you have the numbers start with the pathways, which starts 11, 12, 13, and keeps going on. So it's like first having the basic skeletal structure, then you, then you could start worrying about the connections between it. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like the scaffolding, and then you, then you fill it in with the floors and right. with the walls. And <laughs> um, so 13 does relate to that, and that's a whole other kind of area of understanding sometimes where there are certain power numbers that, or, and symbols that oftentimes people maybe are afraid of because there has been a lot of um, attempts by lesser than light forces, let's put it that way, who like to create fear around were reservoirs of power. Right, so if they can right, have people to exactly. believe can consensus reallocation of their attention towards buying their story of propaganda, then it weakens our ability to access it in, right. in a Right, well that's way. why it's But they don't want you attention. to have that, they don't yeah. want you to have this information. You know, I'm looking at this at the moment, and I'm, I'm seeing that you talked about the uh, pyramid top, uh, and I was just getting that uh, it's useful in doing healing because um, you got right side of the brain, left side of the brain, you know what I mean? And if the ailment is on the right side of the body, you would go to ask the archangel in charge of it, say, Bena, which would be... Uh, Safkiel. Uh, Safkiel, you know, and, uh, and uh, enlist his help in doing it. And I would think that that would be fortuitous. That would, that's exactly one of, the, one of the ways to apply it, if you're a practitioner working with other people or for yourself as well. Absolutely, it, it definitely helps a lot, especially if you already have energy work in your, in your system and you're working with moving chi energy, yeah. it can just help you to interface more specifically with you know, it in a more discreet manner that, mm -hmm. that can be clarified by understanding correspondences of what it relates to because each of the energy centers have different correspondences, which is why in the chart we have the little descriptions on, 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 the, on, the, on the side where we break down each energy center into their basic correspondences of angels, archangels, planets, mm -hmm. um, and then basically the um, God name at the end, number four, or a D, I just actually put it in that case. So, but now, just get back to the chakra system, that's a good idea here. We can explain more of it as you understand more of the qualities. Uh, Da'at would be the uh, throat chakra area. And Da'at is, is its own kind of story in itself because it's included, yet not included. It's almost like a Zen cone when it, when, yeah, it's empty, when, when, right? when it comes to the tree of life because in the traditional system, there are 10 sephirot, but they'll include it in a way, but, they, they don't, but there's reservation about actually calling it a sephirot. So it, it's included there, but it's not, it's, it's very almost like, um, um, well, it, it's, hard, it's easier to explain once we, look, once we look a little bit more in detail about what it actually stands for. It stands for knowledge. And so this is the idea of where you get in the Bible about the knowledge of uh, the uh, tree of life of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Oh. So there are different areas where you can understand that there are, there's not just one tree of life only. There are other aspects, there are other types of trees that people can worth, work with. And just to clarify even the beginning understanding is that even though this is a beautiful construct of light energy of understanding how creation forms, there's also a dualistic side to, to, to the tree um, that is referred to more as, more as a tree of death, and it actually is, huh. is, an, is an inverted version of the tree. <coughs> really? Where, oh, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah, and, that, and that's... Makes sense. But in a, because in a sense, any, any real, I mean, if you look at world spiritual traditions, or in, especially with the indigenous systems, any, any real archetypal system that tries to describe process of manifestation, which really is describing magic, <laughs> you know, how, how, how do we create as a living consciousness? by understanding laws of creation, which right, is both right. scientific and, and metaphysical and spiritual, you know, and understanding how our consciousness interfaces with energy that, as an antenna and as an ability to, to precipitate it. So if, obviously that can go either side. It can go towards helping others or it can go towards hurting others. It depends on the user. It makes like, perfect sense. It's like electricity. You know? And <laughs> I imagine uh, the, the dark, uh, the saintinist and so forth, would use the inverted tree of life. There's a whole system for that. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Something I didn't think about. Yeah, so, uh, if I, I develop ceremony... So the inverted, yeah. the inverted tree would be of a negative nature? Yeah, what happens basically is that instead of having... Um, because each of the energy centers has a, is basically um, 
a different kind of virtue of God that mm -hmm. you wish to embody, that of the perfected man, perfected woman. So that would be like the anti So the, the, yeah, the, the anti-tree, you call it that, would be kind of a good idea to call <laughs> it that, the anti-tree life. Um, that would be, instead of putting virtues, they're vices. Right. And, wow. and, and <laughs> instead of having arch, archangels, they have archdemons. Instead of angels, they work of demons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there's a whole specific wow. you know, system with that. And, they, and, they're, and, they're have, they'll, and there are certain animals that are associated with the tree. And in the dark system, they, they work with corrupting the, those totem animals. So when they're projecting on people or energies, they'll, you'll, they'll work a lot with different structures to represent the shadow side of, 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 of our own na nature. So the more we heal our own shadow, the more you're right. less susceptible. And, you know, it's on to being able to take back our power from where we've given it away, even unconsciously. Right. And you know, well, secularly, we've given it away. Oh, my God, yes, especially. <laughs> Ultimately, you have to integrate the light and the dark to be whole, you know, so it's best well, you to... transmute the dark, at least, yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. you have to transmute the dark. Yeah. And then, uh, like the Indians would say, they would call it the red road. you got to walk the red road, mm, 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 you mm. know, so... That would be like the middle path in the, in the tree, which is like right. the center of the pillar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, then if we're going down... Uh, into Gebura, which is the right shoulder, and uh, Gedula's left shoulder. Um, Tifereth is the heart chakra, and this is a not very this, uh, this is the center of the tree of life. And we have, as a planetary ruler, we have the sun there. Oh, that makes so sense. So we mm -hmm. knew about the fact that the sun is the center of our solar system before, <laughs> long before modern science claimed to think that we always that we, that they put Earth in the center. Too. <laughs> you know, what was that about? It's like the center tree, and it's and it's it's exactly. So this is also representational of our how the solar system energies. So astrology and tarot are also link, linked up into the system. And also energetically for our own systems, the heart chakra, everything goes through that. So it, that makes perfect sense. Exactly, exactly. That which nourishes us. So it's the idea of opening. And the sun has been such a major symbol of the heart consciousness, of the Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, of that lo love energy. Mm -hmm. So it's that which gives unconditionally, it doesn't judge who it sh sh shines upon. Yeah. How, how old is this? Well, they been, <laughs> I mean, that's also a good I mean, question. You, always, you, you know, <laughs> they talk about, you know, um, you know I, I've known a lot of friends of mine who are uh, you know, Jewish, Hebrew, whatever you want to, and um, they kind of look at this as some kind of like uh, mysticism, you know, uh, some uh, kind of a metaphysical, you know, gibberish. <laughs> and that's what they write it off as. But some of them really, are, you know, they, I mean, it's come to light since uh, Madonna and mm -hmm. several others have gotten into this. And uh, they try to make it a, a trendy thing. But this is, this, you know, serious. This is this ancient. Is a, this is yeah. ancient. And this is it a is. serious thing and not to be taken and, so lightly. And it's been, you know, spread down from long, for many generations, especially um, during the Christ times and before, uh, more through an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. And then later on, like especially during the medieval times in the 13th century earlier, there was, when there was a lot more codification of, of manuals that were more written because a lot of times the rabbis would pass it, you know, a lot of information on. And yeah. the uh, um, Zohar and the um, first, five, and the um, also in the, in the first five books of our normal Bible, which obviously right. is, all, is all Kabbalistic related material. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they also deal with the Hebrew letters a lot because the Hebrew letters, since there are 22 main ones, not counting the final, a um, few of them also relate to um, basically each of the pathways of the tree of life corresponds to a Hebrew letter. So that's part of the idea of the power of, of the spoken word, that, which is reflected in, in the nature of the letter itself. Do you see that symbol behind you? That's the 23rd missing Hebrew letter. Well, that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Speaking of that, <laughs> yes. Well, it's, you know, we're all about upgrading our semantics. Yes. <laughs> so I, was given, yeah, I was given that symbol, I don't know, I guess it's 10 years now. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's called Yatuve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's uh, Y-T-V-Y for the shortened version. Mm -hmm. So I know. So you're talking about how they say other letters are coming forth at the perfect time to heal Mother Earth. That's when that came into wow. being. Well, we, perfect. When we, yeah. when we incorporated the Yatuve symbol into our show, um, I had Alvina said to me we were coming up with a, a name for the show, and it was given to me God's way mm -hmm. because it's a symbol. When he saw the symbol, that's what he said, right? God's wow. way. When you look at mm -hmm. that symbol, mm -hmm. if you look at it closely, that symbol is very, very reminiscent of the human helix. Yes, I was going to say, it has the DNA, there. which is also the tree of our life, our path. 
So it seems to me that it's very, very much involved in this. For sure. It's it relevant. Like it's relevant. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And I would say even probably even more so when you, when you talk about the, about the nutrient life, uh, which is a, a, one of the later charts in a little while. We'll discuss a little bit about that because the same way that you mentioned that, that there are new letters mm -hmm. that are coming into manifestation to help mm -hmm. God heal. There so are new pathways. This is, this is expanding. Yes, yeah. there, there are new pathways which, okay. which are forming to help represent that our new ability to bridge different states of consciousness that were formerly seen as separate or disparate mm -hmm. and being able to heal and bring harmony to more of Gaia's kingdom within our own bodies as a reflection of that. Now yeah. these are, uh, my understanding is Metatron. These are letters of light that Metatron creates. And I know that that's where that one came from. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I'm assuming the others do too, although I never really questioned that to get the uh, direct answer. but. Yeah, they're, they're called letters of life. That's so yeah. interesting, especially yeah. in regards to even seeing other people who to talk about like, like the light language and the different sounds that, that can be channeled that are both angelic and also galactic yes. based. It'd yes. be, be a similar kind of idea that we're all being pushed to expand our ability to connect to greater l lines of communication or the lineages that we have. You know, prior to just thinking about our own physical Now, body. do these also have numbers? Do these relate to a, a, a number as well as a consciousness? For instance, I was given mm -hmm. the, uh, for Yatave, the number is 1,000, the numerical number. <clears throat> huh. Well, um, there, there's a whole system of numerology. And <laughs> that can fill many volumes oh of books. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, that are out there, and I'm, I'm working, but slowly I need to get back to finishing my own book about the Tree of Life. But there, there's, it's amazing. It's a whole other level because the same, same way in English numerology, we add up each letter of a word, for example, right. to find its basic derivative. Um, <clears throat> but there are many other systems that are not just using addition. But uh, and the same thing in Hebrew letter. Each Hebrew letter has a numerical value. So for them, they would add up the value, and other words or, or phrases that have the same um, numerical value would be connected to each other. Although mm -hmm. at first they may not always be the seen as being directly relatable, but they, they can be substituted and sometimes yeah. some of the early crypt cryptography had to do with these different types of understanding of, of what numbers can be cross-related to each other. You know, um, so no, there's, there's amazing, I, I calculated things in, in, in the tree that I discovered from my own work with it. Um, from working with, the working with the Hebrew numerology of the names of the angels of the planets mm -hmm. of, of the pathways, <clears throat> of some of the qualities, and um, I was able to calculate many constants. I was able to calculate the uh, speed of light actually down to the mile oh, per wow. second, which was a whole that could be fun. <laughs> That's of, of amazing. About that. Okay, how fast was that? And uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, obviously, we you know 186,000, you know, 282 miles, but that exact number came out and relating to numbers that, that, that had to do with oh, concepts did, of light you, in the did, tree. When you did the shot? That's when amazing. Did. Well, it actually, I, all I had to use was four terms and it came out to it. And wow. But, but part, part of the key of how I work with the numerology is that. I discovered it's, you need to not only add, you also need to multiply. Really simple addition, right? It's, you, you, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a simple upgrade to numerology. Let's just try multiplying Let's and start adding. Multiplying so it. if you start multiplying some of these letters and that, that make up well, some words. You just multiply it to make it fit. Right now? <laughs> you, you, you know. Well, no, no, I, I discovered it the other way around. I was, <laughs> I, I, was, I was playing with different permutations and then I would get guided with different words. Like, okay, what is this angel out to? Like, what is this for sentence that I have to? Like, light of God or light of this, yeah, you know, well, yeah. trying to see. And then I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty. You know, interesting. So in other you know, words, as you were figuring it out, you would add it up and then read what they coincide to. And yeah, what, what and, then, and then I'd be like, wow, okay, this actually is literal. It's not even just a symbolic anymore. And, then, <laughs> and I started also coming up with some of the atomic numbers of the elements that mm -hmm. actually related to the metals that, 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 that and more, more of an astrological side of it that came through. So the basic idea is that there's, that, that tree life is not a stagnant system that's just relegated to an ancient you know, series of texts or oral tradition. It's evolving as we evolve as well because it's about receiving and the word Kabbalah, which is, it comes through a word which means to receive. So well, yeah, the, li openness. the living light, um, right? The living light, it changes as the consciousness changes. That's why readings, for instance, if you get a psychic reading and the psychic tells you this is gonna happen, well, it was perfect at that moment in time, but if one little domino falls, mm. everything else changes too. You see, it's the same with consciousness, period. So, you know, that's something to bear in mind. Um, Perfect, yeah. So, um, what else do we need to know well, with then, this? And then when you go down the tree, uh, since we, mm -hmm. we stopped at the heart chakra, Hod uh, and Netzak, Hod is on the right hip, Netzak is on the left hip. Um, they would work together to create more, more of the, or the overlap of their energies would be more of what we call the third chakra. Mm -hmm. yeah. And partly because the idea is that Hod on the right side of the hip, tree, on the right hip, relates to the, to the mental body, to the air element, to Mercury, to your inner male energies, more like the youthful side. And 
net sack is ruled by venous and relates more to the emotional body and the water element. So we all know that our stomach area lots of times, you know, is, is our, own, our own dynamic tug of war between our inner male, female natures, you know, it gets played no, out a really? lot. You know, <laughs> it gets put out in our digestive tract of how we digest energies and a lot of that has to do with our emotional patterns and perceptions and, 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 our, and our mental habits and thought forms mm. overlap so it makes sense that we get the, that different energy or feelings in the belly, so to speak, when we're either being intuitive or if we're getting stressed out or feeling sensitivities. You get the queasy feeling. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's part of what that, that, that dynamic of flow between the left and right sides. And you know how people say, uh, it, that doesn't sit right with me. Usually you feel that in your gut. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. the same thing. It's, it's the mental and the emotions. They're, they're balanced there. They're saying, hmm, something's not right there. You I know? just thought it was that chili. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It could have been. And, and in a way, it's also con the other third factor because these things are not just to be seen as isolated units. They're all interconnected to each other um, and holographic in a way with each other. So, te so, so, so technically, there is a whole tree of life within each of the energy centers. You know, uh, but then and as a further refinement of the third chakra, like mm -hmm. as you said about sitting in the seat, so to speak, underneath that in the middle pillar, you have Yesod, which is the second chakra. But if you were to look at the triangle there between Hod, Netzach, and Yatsad, they form that inverted triangle, which is kind of like part of the idea of that seat there. Oh, okay. Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the Yatsad energy, even though it's second chakra, it's ruled by the moon. So it also would then relate to the level of understanding our emotional body and water element, or, us, the, or the nature of being a mirror. Well, it says it has Gabriel as the archangel of the, the center. Uh, of the moon, yeah. Would that Yassad. be considered like down, I guess, the. Uh, your your, say, your, your um, sexual organs, more or less. Sacral yeah, chakra. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. that definitely connects to your sexuality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you a question on that. Um, because he was about, he, he, about even in the story of him assisting with, with, the, with the birth of Christ. So oh, the idea is about giving birth. So he's here with yes side. So that was Gabriel doing it? <laughs> <laughs> that, come on, pitch it right in. That, was that, is that what he was doing? <laughs> the angelic oh midwife aspect of it. Yeah. No, no, what, 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 I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, in the course of you know, healing this work that I do and she does, um, you know, I always call on the, you know, everybody else to help me too, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. uh, God and Blessed Mother and everybody. But uh, I see these different archangels that represent these chakra systems here. Would I call on them, as the, you know, besides St. Raphael to come in? Uh, and, For sure, and to work Absolutely. in the area, so you know, you, you would uh, enlist their help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, this, is, this is good to know. And not not just the archangels, but also the angels, because sometimes the archangels may be a little busy. <laughs> but I mean, just, just in terms of opening up the space. The army yeah, army. I know, I know. <laughs> you know. Try to put a little joke in there at the same time. About, okay. You know, because they, they have, they, they obviously, they, they project their energy, but they, they have the angels with them for a reason in that mm -hmm. sense. So sometimes I used to be guilty of that too, sometimes only calling on the archangels, and like, wait a minute, you know, and they were like, oh, no, I know, yeah, we have angels here also to dispense to us. They do that, yeah. You want the full totality of that level of power, and then it's like, more of the archangel, but if you want some of the rays of energy that that quality represents, it's, the angels could be asked first. Why was that if they can't have a little job, then, then you go to the big well, then, daddy. So well, then you can call on, uh, when, when you call on the angels or whoever you work with, um, you actually, um, some people actually call upon a ray, the seven rays and so forth, mm. but it automatically happens uh, for me. I don't have to specifically call upon them, but oh, that's nice. something we're going to do in another show where we're nice. going to talk about the seven rays and their partners and, uh, and, you know, the different colors they represent, the powers they represent and so forth. And somehow or another, this t obviously ties in. For sure, because in, in, the, in the tree here, one of the beautiful things is that if you look at the top three, um, one, one way I like to look at because sometimes there are things that are hidden, like in, especially like doing the alchemical times of paintings and look, looking at alchemy, and, and especially um, the old like grimoires and like, and like the manuscripts where, where certain symbols that we perceive as being meaningful only one way have multiple meanings to them, obviously. Same way that one word can add up to a number and can be related to other, other words with the same number to, really, to, show, to illustrate a principle of underlying inter interconnectivity. So if we look at the top three energy points as being like the capstone right, or the eye of God pyramid mm -hmm. shining. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what, what, which for, as a solar symbol, that eye represents, well, it's going to emit light, right? Well, light, so in this, in this sense, dot becomes more like, more like the, the, the actual space, the, 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 the separation area, because it's trying to ground 
the higher vision of God into our body to manifest the energy flow. The seeing eyes, it's on the dollar bill. Exactly, yeah. That, they, that's a whole, I could do a whole class on that because there's a whole dis distortion of them because it's about whose eye are you following. You know, it's about the third eye, so it's, you know, right. there are many darker groups who try to program certain eyes, you know, and symbols because they want us to be more hypnotized by the power of their occult vision or the Lord that they're serving, which is not the one Lord, but, right. but, but usually a higher level negative ET under a name of a deity, you know, that, that's- The other what, Lord, know. Gus. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And I mean, and, and uh, there's an Egyptian system with that um, that goes into a longer story. But, uh, but the basic idea here is if you look at the top three as a capstone of the pyramid eye, um, and that dot being like the sky in which the, that fills, that can be filled with sunlight or with shadow, depending upon you know, what, we're, what we're illuminating it with. And then the body or the manifestation on the ground it, is that the, the, the white light of the sun or the golden light, the ray of the sun, mm -hmm. manifested a rainbow into seven rays. So you have the all-seeing eye shining through space and it manifests into the seven rays, into the seven colors or the seven energy centers mm -hmm. that literally form underneath the uh, top three. Hmm. So it's an interesting way to see it, you know, just encode it that way. So this, they're breaking down that system of embodying those, those distinct rays um, uh, while understanding their source and, and being able to create more of a conduit in your body so that you become more of the divine man, divine woman, and that reflects the order of, the, of a house of harmony as opposed to a house on, uh, of chaos. You mm -hmm. know, this is all higher knowledge, and I think that we know it's ancient, but not many people knew about it except the, uh, I guess, what would you call them, the adepts? You know, the people or the, or the priests, they kept this pretty much hidden yeah, unless did. it was passed through, you know, the families. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And then later with the Sefer um, Yetzira, one of the main books where it talks a lot about information about the letters of God and different formations. Um, you know, so a lot of things were written in coded manner even for that or the deep philosophical aspects. So I work more, more so with the practical side of the tree in a sense of, you know, understanding part of its philosophical spiritual base, but also wanting to apply it and understand you would how think to ground it. a lot of this it. was deliberately deleted from any written text or hidden away that uh, this wouldn't become common knowledge and the basis of either uh, Judaism or uh, even Christianity. Yeah. All right. Uh, a lot, like they took a lot of the books out of the Bible, like exactly. And, and, and then even with Judaism, you have so much of the people who are more the same. They, they same, will, same with any, any mainstream religion, you have people would, who are just stuck in the religious side of it as opposed to the spiritual right, side. Right. They get trapped, and yeah. that's and the all problem. the laws yeah. and the rules. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> would would, would yeah. you think that yeah. that would be removed out of there in order to uh, basically keep the flock in line? I would say for sure, because yeah. definitely, definitely, which is very, very sad because they have so many, there are so many seeds of truth that they can work with if they get beyond, because, they, because they're, they're, a lot of these systems, whether they're religious or political, economic, all rely on, our, on their ability to create division amongst people. And division amongst people first starts with dividing people inside themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you make people feel that they're separate, then they're more controllable. And so, and, and so this is a blueprint of understanding where we can re retrieve our wholeness and understand that we are whole mm -hmm. and understand where we've been separate within our own distinct aspects of our identity. Where have, where have we segregated our roles in our life, right? Where, where have we over attached our perceptions of, of... Basically taking back your life and taking back what God designed you to be. Yeah, and, and really understanding that this is about part of the resurrection is about healing that which was divided so it might be united again. Mm -hmm. And so the tree provides an idea of understanding that blueprint of maybe where we've sequestered parts of our identity or overly related, you know, certain roles have been attached to them. See, in the ancients, they knew that the main goal was soul growth and working their way back to God. And this is a path to work your way back to God. But uh, what wound up happening one way or another uh, was that people became trapped into religion and basically that's the uh, larva stage of mm. spirituality. Now I have nothing wrong with religion at all except that we want to grow beyond religion and have our own personal relationship with the Godhead and that's where people get stuck because the priest is there and yes. people go to communion <laughs> and they think okay well that's, well, it's the that's all. It's, it's the flock you know? mentality. It's the flock mentality. Right, you right. The, the flock, flock mentality, yeah. Uh, in, in a virtual realm of darkness by not enlightening them yeah you know it'll only take you so far and the only ones that control the the whole thing are the higher echelon of that particular religion right and okay. that that's a great segue looking at the tree because uh the actual top two which are underneath catcher the crown shocker you have you have hokma and bina hokma is where you find the divine father energy mm -hmm. uh bina is where you find the divine mother 
So one of the beautiful things that gets so suppressed in the main religions is that there's a perfect balance between male and female energies right. that are equal on equilibrium with each other. Yeah. They're not superior. And they create that divine voltage of how, what, what fuels creation yeah. in both directions, for into, yeah, involution and evolution. And so, but as the capstone, as the idea of the father-mother, they also understand psychology because a good magician is a good psychologist as well. Understands what <laughs> make, <laughs> it's like, it understands what, what makes people think. We know how, how can we trigger people's buttons. This is how these people work on a higher level, even in, in establishing a religious organization or political or media. You know, finding people's buttons or create buttons or create fears. You know, and, and they understand. Oh, they certainly do. And, and especially perfect. especially the ones that are working in the higher higher echelons that, that are involved in like you know working with the tree of death aspects. You know, they're they're quite aware. I mean, there are many different you know rabbis who are on both sides and certain rabbis are of the light and other ones that, mm -hmm. that work with the other side of it too and then other other western magical tradition you know there are different groups like uh, Alistair Crowley has started a bunch of them you know like the OTO organization and different ones they they work with a lot of distortions of, of the tree along with like vampirism type activities they do psychic vampirism techniques and uh, so there's there's a lot of you know so but it, I don't go to that but the idea is a hotma the father so if they understand that a, that a person is not connected to their own fundamental house is in an order of, of then they male can, and female and and then they can right. then they try to become the substitute for for the father energy by yeah. by claiming themselves as as being the patriarch of the church or right. the patriarch of the, the pope or whatever the rabbi yeah. right. the higher religious head in a way kind of, it's like the idea of, of some them trying to stand between you and the sun right and saying oh yes i come in the name of the sun i shine forth his rays and meanwhile exactly. they're standing in like a dark vatican you know structure right. which is more which has a lot more darkness and light in it because the idea is that they they understand people have innate desires as their inner child wants to find a father wants to connect to the mother and and so if they haven't found it in themselves then they provide the the um false outlet for right that. and they're stuck and not only That's that the but they've more or less squashed the divine feminine oh yes it's been a patriarchal society <laughs> and that needs to come more in the balance mm -hmm. you know that really does now I, I got a question for you now as you people go through these consciousness shifts and uh, and they get the attunements they need to uh, to move to the next level uh, like you I would think they'd go from like one to the other and so forth is that right um, that's definitely one one way to do it is also um, idea of what they call path working where you're working with the pathways because the pathways are bridging the different energy centers I see and mm -hmm. I mean astrologically it's a great example because for example um, Gabura which is a right shoulder um, is is also is connected to the inner male. It's, it stands for like uh, courage or valor. Okay. The, the, the hero archetypes. Uh huh. Mars and, the warrior. Oh, exactly. And one, one, one beautiful thing about the tree is that you know, when you understand it in more detail, you can begin to see how different mythologies, you know, be it Greek, Roman, whatever, Egyptian. A lot of them, aside from the higher, you know, galactic ET connections they may have in terms of representatives. In terms of this pure Jungian point of view of archetypes, you can see how the Tree of Life provides a blueprint of, of how you can dissect or understand some of the character roles that these so-called deities have had in the mythology, because they they, they are part of our, uh, our collective consciousness makeup, and they 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 will stir certain energies in motion within hmm. within the person. That's why certain movies attract so many people because they're like remakes of the archetypal themes of old mythologies that are re booted or revamped to match our modern, you know. Like uh, how popular the Marvel characters are exactly, right now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I love it, exactly. Yeah. Which be, and that's, and that, that, they actually bridged to me some of like the new tree life because they're, they're really like the part of Uranus and the age of Aquarius where they're like modern day archetypes that bridge oftentimes galactic, mm -hmm. you know, especially the heroes that are coming from other planets, you know, that are here yeah. to help serve, you know, uh, especially with Superman as a basic example, you know, you can, you can even analyze what, what, it may, what, what, may seem, what may be seen as, you know, more childlike as being, no, this is equally valid because this is our lens of perception mm -hmm. now too. And they're still it's following how a similar- his name was mm -hmm. what, Zorel or something like yeah, that? Yeah, no, it's uh -huh. ridiculous. With the L yes. at the end? <laughs> So was oh, it, yeah, is he yeah, an archangel yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, right. No, and 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 uh, Sor or it's, or it's with, with with like the Zadi letter T S yeah. actually stands for fortress. You know, Zadi? so like well, I'm no yeah. Sor Sorel like uh, but uh, but Zadi, yeah. yeah, a little different. Uh, yeah. But uh, and how uh, about Ka, oh, I'm Ka with the Egyptian with the power, you know, and the L the divine <laughs> one. It's you know. <laughs> how about Thor? What's the uh, what would you say? How does Thor relate oh, in there? Because Thor I has come in through to me <laughs> so much. <laughs> Isn't yeah. Thor in well, Norse God? He's huh. actually, yeah, he's Norse god, but he's in a higher galactic level, what I work with, he, he's connected to the star system in, in Arcturus, so that, where that, that's, that's one of the home, if you want to get into more of the cosmic shamanism aspect mm -hmm. that I work with. Uh, there are certain planets in Arcturus that are the home worlds of, of the beings that inspired the positive Nordic tradition. There are other ones that are on the, on the more the negative side, uh, mm -hmm. like with Loki in them. But well, Loki yeah, and yeah, yeah. All ruled by Odin? Uh, well, o Odin's a great guy. Absolutely, I agree. <laughs> okay. No, no, he's definitely because because as we evolve our own system of accessing 
our own relationship to what, say, for example, Divine Father, uh, it's about our container, our cup, our ability to receive more and more increments of what that energy offers us from that, light. From that mm -hmm. creator mm -hmm. and, and the, the creator's holographic. And so that be, be a mother, be a father, there are different levels of understanding what mother, father is about. On a basic level, like tuning into Mother Earth, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's like a certain size cup of our ability to receive, say, a certain level of energy from a larger mother figure beyond mm -hmm. our own family in terms of manifestation, the physical mother. So then the larger idea is, okay, well, what's like the, the mother side of planets and like the, the divine mother, you know, of another star system, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah. that, that has embodied itself through that local planet that you may have, that you may have a lineage connection to from other lifetimes. And then like what's galactic mother, the universal mother. So the idea is that it, it, our cup and our bodies need to evolve to match our ascending of, of consciousness. Right. And that, so, so it can be, you know, simpler or comp complex just depending upon you know, how much of the terrain you're actually navigating in your own journey process, right? In your process of self-discovery. So um, to bring it all the way, also, but to ground both points, the, the process of manifestation in a tree, which goes down the number paths, is also referred to as, as the lightning path. So again, the <laughs> idea of like Uranus or the Thor energy is that, that, is, is, is that hammer with the, the, the power of, of electrical energy being able to bridge And didn't realities. I just show you that picture with the uh, <laughs> lightning um, earlier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and I have something I want to show you exactly, when I can find it. So I, I continue on sure. here and then I want to find this to show it to you. Sure. <laughs> well, well, Mars or Gabura, the right shoulder, as I mentioned, is, is ruled by Mars or the inner male energy, in, the energy of heroism. Um, that's, uh, well, there was a point before I was originally getting to that. I lost it now. We went, I, you actually forgot something? When I, when I, <laughs> I originally brought up Mars for a reason. I remember, you brought up Mars, I, I what said, was the the, he's the, the warrior, uh, he's the warrior uh, god. But I started going right. just before that. <laughs> just before that, okay. Well, I, I, I zoomed on it for a certain reason, too. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank, it's okay. <laughs> which just means we'll, we'll have to bridge that synapse. So, yeah. okay. oh, no, no, I'm about astrology, that's right. About, okay. I told you never archetypes. forget this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a right cute word, you know, trigger word. Um, one way it's helpful that for people who have an astrological background, at least, or are interested in it, or even mythological background, to look at the pathways as places where we can bridge uh, different energies together and combine them together. It's like a recipe. You want to, you want to mm -hmm. combine the ingredients, and what, 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 what kind of dish can you make if you combine these spices together? You know, um, and, or one way to look at the sephirot as being like neurons, spiritual equivalent of neurons, mm. because the space between them are synapses. Synapses, yeah. Synapses need to be bridged, you know, right? and they create pathways that allow us to have different realizations or different, different to access different states of consciousness. So the, the pathways are literally like the dormant potential states. Of, of possible like neural net connections, and but it takes our us the it takes our conscious effort and will to work with it to activate it more consciously so that does that so that that blueprint mm -hmm. or that template that circuitry is turned on more right exactly you know? exactly and, and then so the idea there is that then it allows things that were formerly disconnected to realize that they're part of a larger whole so in this example Mars well you know if we want to have say say you have like Mars uh, conjunct Saturn in your oh. chart. Say so your personal NATO chart, you have Mars conjunct Saturn. Well, looking at the tree life, you can find where some of these planets are. Mm -hmm. Are there pathways between them? Because certain conjunctions, you're not going to find pathways directly there. So in this example, Saturn is, 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 the, is the planet which rules Bina, the mother energy. So if you have Mars conjunct Saturn, then you would have that pathway. Path 18 would be something you may want to meditate on in terms of your own visualization process and calling on those energies mm -hmm. to be able to understand where in your body mm -hmm. is that conjunction grounded. Yeah, and you know? Saturn is the teacher, correct? So, yes. uh, so when you think about that, if you can understand what the planets do uh, and what they mean, I mean, I'm not an astrologer mm -hmm. either, but it's something I follow. And when you tie, it's just really pretty deep, really. Yeah, it's totally. a pretty deep information. <laughs> and I can tell you this, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Steve is going to come on. We're going to do four, maybe even five shows depending on what we can squeeze in because you can see we've only made it to one illustration and we're already <laughs> running out of time <laughs> so uh, keep an eye out for that because we'll have part one part two part three and part four at least so we can give everyone a basic understanding of what it is and I know we both talk well all three of us talk <laughs> kind of quick so <laughs> you know well, you, you may have to watch it right. once or twice it's each so one just to gr grasp it all but here's what I wanted to show sure. you which uh, now I, every Everything I do is rather simplified, and this is more complex, but you see this dot? Mm -hmm. Now, when I did my very first book, 
See what it says here? Corresponds to the throat chakra and awakening to the universe as well as the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. So you, what does that mean? It means knowledge. So you see, until you awaken to your, uh, at least your each chakra you clear and awaken to, it works its way up in our bodies. So when you clear that, you become aware of more knowledge. And when you open this up and clear that, more knowledge. And here, you open it up, you clear more knowledge. And so this is what the tree of life is doing uh, as well, right? Absolutely. And that's how it works in our bodies. <laughs> Peeling away layers. It's, like it's, this is like yeah. uh, trying to get total balance. That's what I keep on getting. Yeah, it's total balance. And 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 the energy works in both directions. So whether you're you're, you're seeking to uh, uh, embody more of the higher abstract principles, you know, divine wisdom, divine understanding, and the the, the experience of illumination, where you're connecting to Creator, or whether you're trying to actually, like. Focus on manifesting something. Would it be like in the course of, just say you're in your, your meditation or your prayer state and you're praying and stuff like that, and you need work uh, down here at HOD, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, would that be the area that would be getting, uh, receiving the healing or receiving the energy um, for that particular prayer, that, that session that you're in? You mean if you're, if you're working with it consciously or if you're in well, general yeah, healing? Just in general. I'm, yeah. I'm over there, I'm doing my. my um, meditation, my prayers, mm -hmm. and um, I ask God to, you know, basically to check me out and stuff like that. And I seem to have a, a bit of a, a weakness down on the, the what's it, the hip, right, you said? Hot? Yes, the right, right hip, hot. So Mercury would he concentrate his energies there from that prayer session other than the other places? It goes to where you need it. Um, I, ideally, that would be the case for sure, and I, that's why it's also helpful if, you, if there is a you know malady or imbalance in that area. Sometimes it's not even necessary in that location. It's the same way that we can have stress in our body because it compensates right. for pain or imbalance in other part Someone of the body. Else, yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing in the tree, where sometimes we're, we're over overly uh, overcompensating for imbalance well, somewhere else. on one side. Exactly. Yeah, so right. like so, if there's like you know if you're if you have pain in the right shoulder and you know and there's you know but yet you're you're holding back on your aggressive side and you're not you're not letting out anger or you're feeling you're frustrated, not letting it go. You, may, you may get you know shoulder pain because of burdens that you're carrying. It's like mm -hmm. literally part of so the idea. That's, that's when you live in the life. Of, the, you, most people live. Uh, their life with their five emo their emotional states and they don't stay in their higher self and when they do that these things that they the envy the jealousy the hatred the the constant negative uh, aspect of their you know whatever it is that, that's getting them down all right and they're projecting it projecting it projecting it over and over again you know manifesting sickness yeah and they don't understand that you know i'm trying to tell them these people you hear them left and right oh, <laughs> my, my, and my sciatica is bothering me today <laughs> or, uh, gee my hip oh my. no don't claim it. it's not your yeah. hip don't claim well, and it and especially we understand we like to understand that that that, that it's their own subconscious is just taking that pattern mm -hmm. and following the normal blueprint of a circuitry of creation and it thinks that it's the using that input of people creating negative feedback loops and by and that we're, we're, people are accessing their tree life all the time. They don't have to know about it. So it's a negative biofeedback right. is what That's it is. That's exactly the point. Right. And, and this is this is part of the circuit to identify. Okay, this is why this is creating an imbalance where that energy is just looping, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's it's flowing down. It's going to flow down eventually into Malkut, which is the manifest realm. So mm -hmm. people are stuck up here and they haven't achieved the higher levels, and they're only working on the shadow side of these of, of, of the, these these lower habits. So they haven't then, brought it down to fruition. Then then like the, the higher creative aspect just thinks that they want more of that because literally it's just programming the interface points with, with, with the software right. of what they're trying to encode. And so these, right. so these areas get turned on and then they amplify it, you know, and then it goes back down into that. So for me, one, one, one thing I do do, which is helpful to go a little bit into the, one of the charts, uh, before I do any meditations, really group, well, for myself especially, doing work on, heal, on clients, um, or I'm, when I'm alone myself, I'll work with the pentagram ritual. This is um, chart number two here. Well, it's one of the yeah, charts. Yeah, can we see that uh, chart come up, please? Yeah, five-pointed star one. <clears throat> now, let me ask you why they pull that up. Can you, uh, have you ever thought to ask where you are in this chart? Um, yeah, it, it, it depends. Honestly, that's also because there's different levels. It's almost like um, volume control, uh, like uh -huh. these, or like a water mill where there's certain levels of the current that'll flow uh -huh. from one to the other. So a lot of times we can be present in multi. I see. Okay, I got it. But then it depends upon your fundamental 
level of consciousness is like reflected in your kundalini, okay. which reflected like what chakra you primarily say grounded right. in the reality out of. So obviously that can be also referenced in your tree. Like where have you attached your I am identity to? You're you know? here. You're you know? here because I checked earlier. <laughs> Just nice. for the heck of it. <laughs> what, 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 what? The heart, okay, well, wait. Uh, I said uh, I, I scanned it. You know how we do, I taught you how to do yeah. the holographic scanning? Well, you can scan with your hand and, and fingers uh, once you really <laughs> See, get this is interesting because do mine says beauty. That one says love. So this is actually. I guess we're good. Steve. No, thank you. You actually you have the correct one there. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay. If, and because there, there was a little bit of typo. Uh, to oh, okay, yeah. Tiferet should say beauty and then uh, love is more of a quality that comes from it mm -hmm. so but uh, but the original definition yeah. so i should do that commercial don't hate me because i'm beautiful <laughs> yeah. right? the transliteration yeah are. okay the transliteration are. of tifereth is is, yeah. is uh yeah. is, is is but is beauty and and of uh, netzak and if you have the correct chart it actually means eternity uh not beauty that was a typo oh is why okay I yeah i one. say okay so but back to the other chart which is now being shown the kabbalistic pentagram ritual now this is a longer story but the idea is that um there there are different groups like the Golden Dawn had come up with. There are different magical, Western magical groups that incorporated Tree of Life material into, into magical ceremonies. And they also combined stuff from like Solomon's seals because Solomon was working with, with the Kabbalah. He was working with both sides though, mm -hmm. which is also obviously because it, he's, he's one of the most interesting figures because the, the Christians love him, the Masons love him, and the Satanists love him. You know, and, and I mean, it's, it's so true. Like literally they all have texts related to Solomon material. Mm -hmm. It's because he worked with angels and with demons. He literally had, had coded down, you know, part of the tree life and tree of death. To so figure out where his minds are? It's, but this, this this is a problem. That's why he had, he was such a polarized figure, but you know, and it's understanding uh, and important people understand that because people still give power away to false kings, yeah. you know, and, and it's, and it's, it's a subtle thing. Well, now, you know, there's been some speculation that, um, the crossover with the Egyptians, like for instance, mm -hmm. I have, I read a couple of books and they were referencing that, uh, King Solomon may actually have been David mm. in our, in the Christian religion. I think that was right. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, uh, basically the same people with a, with a different storyline. Sometimes, yeah. I, I, my my experience, I would say there there be different characters, but that, but the, but the, because they're also dealing with like the lineages of the first temple versus the second temple and, the, and things that were passed along to the high priest there at that time, and uh, which gets a longer story. But so what the. You, if you look, if you do a search for um, like lesser banishing ritual of, of the pentagrams or pentacles, you'll, you'll you'll see different techniques come up that the Golden Dawn invented, um, which I apply part of it. Uh, but part of what I do is that, but I've added important additions to it from my guides and working with the angels to me, which makes it more powerful. Than, and a lot of people who are working with it compared to systems and seem like this is more powerful for them too. Um, now, the, the understanding that, that is that the tree also incorporates different geometries. So you want to be able to work with geometry um, and understand that that, uh, that affects the flow of energy. The same way Feng Shui would organize things in your home to balance out the chi energy flow mm -hmm. to maximize energy and distribution in different sectors of your life. If you work with certain geometries that are of sacred nature in terms of their proportions, you still have to qualify that geometry. No mm -hmm. geometry is inherently you know, good or evil. And some people just sometimes want to work with a certain symbol as a shape and they think it's automatically going to be only good things to them. When it's not true because it's it's a framework, it's an antenna. Sure, I know so, you're holding the, uh, that I forgot what you said it was called. Oh, the kyanite crystal. Yeah. I know it's the, is, uh, is that relevant as you're doing this? Is it in power or something? Oh uh, well, yes. I, I do work with different crystals, and you can. There's a whole the system yeah. of looking at different crystals that correspond. Now, to we, each of the we do that from time to time. But I just mm -hmm. was wondering, what exactly does that do? This is like my magician's piece. I call it because it helps me ground more. Of that little energy. wand. Yeah, exactly. It's the like a little crystal hammer wand. of Thor. I oh, I, I have swords and staffs at home that I work with. <laughs> 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 I have my own. I have like my, my like regalia. <laughs> you know, so that, when I'm doing sessions with people, we sell that at QVC. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And even sessions with people on the phone, I, I set up my, my, my space with the altars and the, and the swords and staffs to create like a proper antenna environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. and you know, the different crystals have different um, frequencies. frequencies, so that would obviously be a grounding frequency, right? I mean, now, yeah. we, we, we only have four minutes left. So, so I'll just draw, um, I'll draw real quick, just yeah. to show you a little quick. So <laughs> with the pentagram ritual, as a, it's basically used as a technique where you're, where you're drawing pentacles with your hand, mm -hmm. which I'll, I'll illustrate it in a minute, mm -hmm. in the four directions. Uh -huh. I, I add above and below. Okay, smart. And uh, yeah. and uh, when when I when I draw them, I draw I draw one first. You start east. You draw one pentagram. You basically activate it. You activate it by saying one of the god names to that direction. So uh, and then you turn. You face the next direction, which I can illustrate in a minute. And you're basically creating like a 
sacred um, firewall, if you want. <laughs> it's, a, it's a protective thing. It's, 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 it's protective, but also a quality control, mm -hmm. in the sense like it can be more like a welcoming lens I see. so that the angels can pour their energy more directly through the geometry of what you've now intended to create with yeah. your, your co-participation. So, you know, I know that most people think that that would have to do with witchcraft, but remember that this symbol was a good symbol, which was perverted, more or less. It, exactly, no, because, yeah. and understanding that all, because a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the Western magical traditions have had different spawns, different spin-offs. Right. And so um, a lot of the negative groups will invert the pentagram and work with the inverted five-pointed star. Oh. Now there's a different ritual where I work with more about healing those two, which is mm -hmm. too long to go into right now, but because there was this idea of separation again, of them trying to create duality where there was original unity. So mm -hmm. uh, I, qu I qualify the pentacle with uh, five letters, which make up the name of Yeheshua or Jesus with it. Mm -hmm. so I find uh -huh. that it just amps up the voltage. Oh yeah, because I bet it even, would. even when he's talking about, <laughs> he wasn't even talking about his persona when he mentioned that he was that, just to, read, just to go back for a second, when, when, he, when he mentioned that he was the, um, uh, the whole idea of him being the son of God, Kabbalistically, when he said that his father and I are one, mm -hmm. he literally was referring to path 15 in the tree of life because he was an expression, an avatar of Tifereth, the solar consciousness, and father energy is Chokmah. So literally he's talking about path 15, he came as an avatar to, to help ground that path oh, into the collective consciousness so that, that we could have that makes beauty. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that so, makes so, sense. and that the power in his name is what he's talking about. So, it's okay. not just him as a persona, but the name. So, Yod Hey Shin Vav Hey mm -hmm. are the five letters. So, if you actually draw the pentacle and the and the and the and the, and the formation of how I described the numbers here mm -hmm. and, and the actual pattern, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll do it a side camera can see because so, uh, some people, <laughs> let's see if I can get up here without a, yeah, I, I can do it as a side area here maybe. Um, you would start on the left hip, and you're noticing that you're basically overlaying the pentacle over the body is relating to sephirot, mm -hmm. uh, at least in, 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 this, in this particular pattern. So I would draw, you start from left hip, you go up diagonally to create the first line, that would be the first yod. Then you go down to the right hip, which is hey, the shoulder. diagonally to left shoulder, shin, across to the right, vav, and back down to left hip, hey. So you're literally using the power of five sephirot mm -hmm. combined with the name, with, with the letters to, to activate a geometry of energy flow. You, you would only and do one? No, what happens is, well, you have your arm extended. You want to make sure your arm is extended because you're drawing it in front of you, just as if you have like a big easel and you, you're basically tracing out the star pattern. Okay. And then av as you draw it and activate it with the letters, you then touch the center of the star at heart level activate. to activate it with mm -hmm. the archangel of the direction and with the God name. Okay. So it, would be so it turns north, on the star, so it becomes like a, like a blazing, glowing star of light or lens mm -hmm. to bring an energy. Then you, you, after you're done, you can receive it, you know, relax with it. You put your hand back out and you turn clockwise the next direction, and then you, then, then you basically do the same thing. So that, that, that's like a shortened version of it for you to understand that you basically do that for the six directions. And well, I can see we're going to have to save the rest of these illustrations for the next show we do together because we're, we have to wrap up, and I'm sorry, I wish I know, we could I know. Get, Time it, went so quick. It, it flows way, way too quick, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much for being on. <laughs> Definitely, And explaining you. some of this to us. And do uh, you have any thoughts other than we want to thank everybody? And well, of course we have to thank everybody. I'd like to thank our, our staff. We always have a, a wonderful crew. <laughs> and uh, our sponsors, uh, that's Antonio's Pork Store down in Tottenville, and uh, Oddvark Pest Control, Great kills. And the crew. So we're going to say good night, and please stay tuned for next month's show. Thank you. <laughs> Bye now.